Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in this video we're going to discuss some of the recent discoveries about mysterious rogue planets. These somewhat unusual objects that are not stars nor planets, and that are actually kind of difficult to fit into any existing category. And the objects we barely knew anything about until the last decade when a lot of them started to be discovered pretty much everywhere. And though today they are sometimes referred to as FFPs or free floating planets, or PMOs, planetary mass objects, overall they are basically all very similar. They are not stars, they are not planets, and they are also not brown dwarfs. They actually seem to be something entirely different. But I guess more importantly, they seem to be everywhere. As a matter of fact, just recently, researchers completely by accident discovered another one with a telescope that was never even designed to find them and was actually designed to discover planets. And so here the test telescope discovered another object approximately 10 light years away from us through the process of gravitational lensing, which once again highlights how extremely common these objects seem to be. As a matter of fact, scientists have even estimated that for every planet out there, there might be at least 10 times more free-floating planets in the entire galaxy. But I guess first let's actually establish exactly what we know about them and exactly what they are before we discuss some of the recent discoveries. And so first of all, as I mentioned before, these are not considered to be brown dwarfs. Here the mass has to be less than 12 masses of Jupiter, and they also don't seem to possess the same properties and are very likely extremely different overall. And since here they don't possess a star and travel through a galaxy without one, we can also assume that they also very likely have extremely different chemistry simply because starlight never influenced them. But here the question has always been in regards to their origin, with the most common assumption being that these are probably results of various planetary interactions, as some of the planets basically get kicked out of the star system and become their own individual objects. This is usually referred to as the theory of ejection. But the more recent research basically suggests that, though possible, it's extremely unlikely that this is the main method for how these objects are created. Which is especially true after recent detections by the James Webb. Dozens and dozens of these objects were discovered and in many cases traveling with a partner. These are now referred to as jumbos, with hundreds more traveling alone. You can learn about these objects in some of the videos in the description, but in essence here the detection suggested an entirely different way of creation, just because a lot of these objects had no stars near them and were orbiting in entirely different ways. Now in that previous video we've talked about one potential scenario, here these are basically failed stars, or stars whose gas has been evaporated by a much more powerful nearby object, but once again this does not explain all of the objects. Here there has to be a different formation mechanism responsible for most of them, especially the objects with higher masses. And well now, in one of the recent studies, Ji Hao Fu and his team were able to actually simulate this and explain some of these objects. And here the idea is actually pretty simple and does explain quite a lot. Here this might be a result of nearby passages between two baby stars with relatively large protoplanetary disks. And specifically this might be the result of very violent interactions as various circumstellar disks come close enough together in various molecular clouds. And so basically as various stars form inside various molecular clouds and as they occasionally approach each other relatively close, the interaction between two circumstellar disks can obviously result in some dramatic changes. And so here by simulating two disks approximately 400 astronomical units across, approaching each other at 3 kilometers per second, simulations reveal these huge tidal bridges that started to eventually collapse into relatively dense filaments which eventually created their own compact cores. And each of these cores eventually resulted in various planetary objects, with masses up to 10 masses of Jupiter, just like the ones we've seen in the Orion Nebula. And intriguingly, up to about 15%, seem to form as pairs or even triplets, and very often separated by 7 to 15 AU between them, which is once again super bizarre because that's exactly what James Webb has detected when it discovered these jumbos. Approximately 10% of all of these objects were basically binary, with a few astronomical units between them, which possibly explains how these objects form, but more importantly confirms that they do seem to represent an entirely different type of an object. An object formed in a very different way and made from stuff that seems to be present in the outer regions of various circumstellar disks. So stuff that we usually expect comets to be made from. And this basically suggests that this could be a fourth type of an object. Not a planet, 
not a star, not a brown dwarf, but instead a leftover of star-forming clouds, resulting from the interaction of various star-forming systems. But obviously this is just a simulation, and more studies are required to confirm this and to discover if this is true. But the thing is, one of the recent observations, once again from the James Webb Space Telescope, revealed something else about one of the more well-known objects, which does present us with more evidence, implying that these objects are indeed very different and extremely unique. And here this is based on observations of an object with the name SIMP0136 plus 0933. Something that was actually discovered a few years back, but something that was always filled with a lot of unanswered questions. And specifically because this object, approximately 20 light years away from us, located in the Carina Nebula, once discovered basically just didn't really make much sense. This was once again a planetary object, and it was only visible in the infrared light, but over the years of observing this object, scientists kept seeing a lot of unpredictable variability, with its entire electromagnetic spectrum changing quite dramatically. Or I guess just to rephrase this, this object basically kind of changed colors, in this case infrared colors, by a huge amount several times per day. And exactly what's happening here, or what physical phenomenon was responsible for this, was completely unknown. Here is a more recent artistic representation of this somewhat bizarre object. But over the years, scientists did confirm quite a few things. First of all, this was approximately 12 masses of Jupiter. Basically, as massive as these objects can get. But this was not a brown dwarf. It was not producing the same emissions and did not possess the same properties. It was also discovered that this object was quite magnetic. Its magnetic field was at least 200 times stronger than Jupiter. But more importantly, it was confirmed that it has an extremely fast day. A single rotation here, or a single day, was only 2.4 hours long, which is why this object appeared so variable. In this case, it was basically the result of very fast rotation, and here it was then discovered that this object is basically positioned in such a way that we basically observe its equator. Here the inclination was approximately 80 degrees. But because this object was only 200 million years old, and because it was so close to us, at 20 light years, it essentially presented us with one of the most fascinating free-floating planets we've ever seen. Which is why years after its original discovery, scientists using the James Webb Space Telescope decided to take another look. Here this is based on a study by Alison McCarthy and her team. But the main focus was on trying to resolve these mysteries by analyzing the atmosphere. And so here by collecting 6,000 different datasets for a few hours in July of 2023, and by using two separate frequencies, scientists once again confirmed that this is indeed a super strange object. Because here during one single rotation, or one single day, the brightness in different frequencies changed quite dramatically, implying very unusual variable atmosphere with tons of different fluctuations in different wavelengths of light. And because here we would actually feel this as heat, since this is infrared, to us this would appear as an object whose heat or whose warmth would change quite a lot in just two and a half hours. But James Webb was able to identify that different wavelengths seem to behave differently. And so here, while some of the wavelengths were brightening, others were actually dimming or were not changing at all. Which basically implied that this was a result of atmospheric layers or atmospheric mechanisms at different heights. But overall, they could be divided into three main parts. The first wavelength was identified at a relatively low altitude and seemed to be actually caused by iron clouds. And so in essence, in the upper atmosphere of this object, we seem to have a lot of iron, and because this object is also hot enough, this iron becomes a gas, orbiting and creating clouds. Then, somewhere above this, there's a second layer that seems to be made out of a very strange magnesium mineral known as forsterite. We actually do have this on Earth, but it's also very often found in various meteorites. And so this mineral seems to form its own clouds on this object, somewhere above the iron clouds. So basically here we have these silicate clouds, or clouds of rock. But because in this case a lot of these clouds seem to be patchy, or essentially seem to not cover the entire object, and will often have higher concentrations in certain regions, this is why there is so much variability. But then there's also the third layer, or the third cluster of wavelengths, which seems to be right on top. And here the researchers believe this is the result of hotspots. And specifically hotspots we often see in a lot of different gas giants, possibly originating as aurora. And so sometimes when these aurora are in our view, we tend to observe them as hotspots on top of this object. Which is how researchers explain these observations from 2023. With the variability basically being the result of patchy clouds. 
or essentially clouds that don't cover the entire surface and seem to be layered. Moreover, they also discovered signs of carbon-based chemicals, which also seems to add a lot of diversity, but also confirm that these objects, unlike the ones in the solar system, seem to be made out of different materials. And so unlike, for example, methane clouds in the atmosphere of Neptune, or ammonia and water clouds in the atmosphere of Saturn, here the atmosphere of this object seems to be essentially rocky, metallic, and also contain a really complex carbon chemistry. And because a lot of these rogue planets seem to actually show extremely similar variability, here are these observations by the James Webb potentially solve some of these bizarre mysteries, with these three specific features affecting all of them. Variable patchy clouds, hotspots, and changing carbon chemistry, with no one single mechanism explaining everything. And this once again reinforces the idea that this is not a planet, not a star, not a brown dwarf. It seems to be indeed its own type of an object, and very likely formed in its own bizarre way, with that previous study we've just discussed very likely explaining how. But since these are just some of the recent observations, and because we only started to understand these objects in the last few years, we're definitely going to be coming back and talking more about this in the next few months. And so until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.